Dream Act. The Catholic Church teaches that in the realm of immigration law, all nations have two essential duties, both of which must be carried out and neither of which can be ignored. The first duty is to welcome the foreigner out of charity and respect for the dignity and rights of the human person. Persons have the right to immigrate, and thus government must accommodate this right to the greatest extent possible, consistent with its other obligations to the common good. The right to immigrate is therefore a qualified rather than an absolute right. Nevertheless, all nations, and especially financially blessed nations, are called to make every possible effort to assist persons who are compelled by their circumstances to migrate. The second duty of government is to secure its borders and enforce immigration law for the sake of the common good, including the safety and well-being of the nation's inhabitants and the rule of law. Sovereign nations thus have the right and the responsibility to enforce immigration laws, and all persons must respect and obey the legitimate exercise of this authority. For their part, immigrants are called to obey the law and carry out their civic duties in furtherance of the common good. On April 3rd of last year, Bishop John C. Wester, on behalf of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, wrote to the primary sponsors of the DREAM Act to state the following. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops express our support for the Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors Act, or DREAM Act. This legislation would make a difference in the lives of undocumented youth who were brought to the United States by their parents and now, because of their lack of legal status, face obstacles to their future. By removing such barriers, the DREAM Act permits immigrant students to pursue a promising future through college education or military service. Those who would benefit from the DREAM Act are talented, intelligent, and dedicated young persons who know only the United States as their home. They can become some of the future leaders of our country, provided we are wise enough to provide them the opportunity to pursue their dreams. Under the DREAM Act, the deserving immigrant youth can adjust to permanent resident status provided that they entered the United States before age 16, have been physically present in the United States for at least five years, demonstrate good moral character, have no criminal record and do not threaten national security, and have earned their high school diploma. This bill offers students a fair opportunity to earn U.S. citizenship if they commit to and complete at least two years of college or two years of honorable service in the military. Importantly, this legislation will apply to students in both public and private education, including parochial schools. It will also place a college degree within their reach by removing restrictions currently in law that limit states from offering them in-state tuition in public colleges and universities. It's important to know these young persons entered the United States with their parents at a young age and therefore did not enter without inspection on their own volition. The DREAM Act represents a practical, fair, and compassionate solution for thousands of young persons in our nation who simply want to reach their God-given potential and contribute to the well-being of our nation. We urge Congress to pass this measure as soon as possible. Thank you for introducing this important piece of legislation. We look forward to working with you until it becomes law. Sincerely, Most Reverend Bishop John C. Wester, Bishop of Salt Lake City, Chairman, USCCB Committee on Migration. We're grateful to Bishop Webster, Wester and the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops for expressing our responsibilities to treating immigrants with dignity, to ensuring the security of our nation, and also for expressing the need for comprehensive immigration reform, which includes provisions for doing both. The DREAM Act is, as supported by the USCCB, an important component of such reform. Thank you very much. And uh, next we have the Reverend Jim Lewis. It's good to have Christian here with us. You're in the Eastern Panhandle. Where are you there? Martinsburg. Uh, really good, because you're working with them up close, the, the Latino workers there. Uh, this is a real treat to be here. Uh, 42 years ago, I came in the Eastern Panhandle to Martinsburg, West Virginia. In those days, we worked with migrant workers, all uh, Latino Jamaican uh, workers. 
That was the beginning of ordained ministry for me. It's taken me through West Virginia, North Carolina, Delaware, Michigan. And always I am bumping into um, migrant workers and always now working, bumping into refugees, the way that word was used today, who've come out of Central America and Mexico from wars, wars that we as a country have participated in and contributed to and have fled to this country, these people, for help, for money, for aid. Um, I brought some, uh, some of my own uh, Jeff brought some stuff here, that, uh, pictures worth a thousand words. Um, I mentioned the migrant work. I, uh, I should have brought a peach. I ate it this morning, so I, it's here, but uh, I didn't bring it to show. Because the peaches that are now at Capital Market are coming right straight from Romney and, uh, and uh, Apple Pie Ridge and places in the Eastern Panhandle and Martinsburg. I did bring a potato, uh, like a French fry. Uh, I brought it because while I was in North Carolina working with workers there, uh, what did I see? I saw people being held in slavery, Latino and black workers, honestly, held in slavery in camps where they could not get away because they, they were under economic pressures. I saw five of them work with them as they came forward to, to Raleigh where I was at that time and we were able to get some kind of help for them out of that. The potatoes we're eating, we're eating have fingerprints on them and they are not the fingerprints, in my mind, of anybody who is illegal. The tradition I come from, the Christian tradition doesn't make anybody illegal. There are fingerprints on them. You're eating the potatoes, uh, and here we are. I came back here, as all, uh, I think many of you know, from Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, after working there for about eight years hard, the hardest work I've ever done, with black and Latino workers who were producing chicken. Now, this is a miniature <laughs> chicken. I wanted to get a great big piece of chicken. When I preached in the Delmarva Peninsula, I used to take pieces of chicken with me on Sunday chuck them to people in the, in the, in the pews. It gives a great attention getter. I'd ask them if they saw any fingerprints on it, and you don't, but they're all over this chicken. So uh, you can buy chicken all along the street out here, and uh, you'll carry it home to your home, many of you, those who eat chicken, and there's Latino and immigrant workers that are bringing that chicken to us, to the people I work to. If I were standing in Georgetown, Delaware today, a place that 25 years ago had no Latino people at all, if I were standing there today in front of the headquarters where I worked out of, where we saw a thousand Latino workers, mostly from Guatemala and Mexico, every month, there would be 60 to 65 percent of the people of that little town, 6,000 people, who were from Guatemala, Central American countries, and Mexico. Think of it. So here we are in West Virginia. We've got workers doing poultry up in Moorfield. We've got migrant workers bringing, uh, bringing food to us daily. We rarely think of it because we see so few, obviously few, of uh, people. They are part of the invisible community here in West Virginia. But we are eating their food every single day. And so we have a responsibility. All right, that, that's enough for me except to say, uh, don't you dare sit down to a meal uh, of any lettuce, tomatoes, potatoes, uh, peaches, oranges, 80%, uh, 80% the workers producing oranges in Florida are considered to be illegal. So drink your juice, eat your oranges and your potatoes and your food, and remember with prayer, certainly, and certainly with the action of passing the kind of legislation that's needed around these immigrant workers. They are the future of this country. Upon them rests the, 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 the future of democracy in this country and of the labor movement in this country. And we must not forget that as we go about eating our food giving blessing. So that's my, my word today. Um, God bless all of the workers, the people who are in this country, and their children, by the way, who we are now trying, Senator Graham, trying to change the 14th Amendment so that they will no longer be sent. Think of the stuff we've read today uh, from, from the Statue of Liberty. Think of it, welcoming strangers from our scripture, that we would even entertain them. All right, why are we doing it? There are lots of reasons. You could list 10 or 12 of them, but mostly because immigration reform is the right thing to do.